Welcome back. You're still watching uh, the Daily Debate, and I am honored uh, to be having with me over the program for tonight Engineer Mohammed Azam, the technology and development expert and the board member of uh, the International Association of Management of uh, Technology. Engineer Azam, thank you very much for being with us uh, tonight on the Daily Debate. Uh, thank you. Always a pleasure being with you in Daily Debate. The pleasure is all mine. Uh, of course, before the break, we spoke about uh, the main top stories that took place uh, today in Egypt regarding the activities of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. One of them uh, mentioned uh, the economic crisis that is hitting the entire globe and uh, the economic effects on the Egyptian citizens. What is the role of technology in mitigating uh, the solutions for uh, resolving the economic crisis for the Egyptian citizens here in the country? Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, all this technology plays a critical role in developing uh, uh, the economy and uh, of course it is uh, the foundation of any development for each economic sector in yes. Egypt and all over the world. <coughs> Uh, always, if you need, if you need to be competitive, if you need to have uh, a resilient ecosystem that is capable to cater uh, the changes that we are witnessing every day, and uh, of course we've seen a lot of unthinkable uh, uh, occasions and yes. unthinkable even crises, <coughs> such as the uh, outbreak of uh, COVID-19 and even uh, the conflict in East uh, Europe that uh, took place uh, in February 2022. Yes. Uh, it shows the importance of building resilient uh, ecosystem and resilience is only achievable by utilization of technology yes. uh, for uh, modernizing your uh, trade system for modernizing your supply chain uh, for uh, having uh, the ability uh, to forecast uh, the demand and uh, to deal with uh, unforeseen challenges that could uh, come to the service any minute uh, because with the technology will be able to connect both physical and virtual worlds all together and you would be able to uh, forecast and foresee the dynamics of the market and would be able to uh, for based on this forecast and foreseeing to manage and uh, optimize your value chain uh, from uh, the production side and from the logistics side and from the delivery uh, channel uh, channels side uh, so without having all this all connected uh, together with an ecosystem that is capable to help you to able to to deal with such challenges of course it would be very hard to realize mm -hmm. uh, an uh, resilient uh, and efficient uh, ecosystem uh, so uh, it would be very important to utilize technology to the maximum uh, in every single economic sector connect all sectors together uh, having the big picture in mind and having the ability to analyze the data and having uh, forecasted plans uh, for the near future and beyond this uh, near future <coughs> and employing also technology in your uh, industrial sector and trade sector would be help would help you of course uh, to have quality product and services that could meet uh, the uh, international taste of uh, the local uh, domestic and international uh, marks as well. Yes, uh, President Assisi also mentioned that we need to be implementing uh, structural reforms in terms of uh, technology because it is the main um, indicator in terms of reforms, the main uh, factor in terms of implementing uh, structural economic reforms for the future of Egypt. Where are we? What do we need to be doing? on the near uh, term and for the long run as well in terms of technology to be getting better results and faster results as well. Uh, for example, if you look at any uh, economic sector or yes. service sector, if we are talking here about the trade sector, uh, you need to see the whole value chain all the time. You need to analyze uh, the supply and demand you need to be able to optimize the, your value chain to the maximum because the optimization of your value chain will help you to reduce costs uh, and eventually reduce uh, the prices uh, yes. for the end users, especially uh, the citizens that has a sort of limited uh, capacity. Uh, also, you need uh, to employ uh, this technology for boosting your productivity, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, uh, 
cutting uh, the unneeded cycles within your value chain because yes. you can find one of the, the 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 most important issue that we are facing is having multiple cycles within the value chain mm. by using the technology you are connecting the producer with the customer and vice versa directly yes. without having the uh, intermediates uh, people without having mm. uh, the brokers and the middlemen which could lower the cost of the definitely product definitely because everyone has a markup which is l l uh, legitimate but however it's increasing uh, <coughs> the cost on the end user by yes. uh, and also increasing the cost on the producer side which is making uh, your product or service uh, totally uh, not co uh, competitive enough to uh, to face the competition because the competition is becoming global uh, we cannot uh, deal uh, with the concept that you are able to compete only domestically uh, yes. actually uh, the competition due to the internationalization to the globalization due even our economy is becoming very connected now all over the world 15% uh, or more of uh, the traded services are now digitized uh, and uh, the the value or the contribution of the e-commerce platform is becoming a significant part of the global uh, economy uh, which is almost uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, billions of uh, US dollars every year are coming through this uh, platforms uh, so in such a very dynamic environment in such a sophisticated uh, business environment and climate especially with uh, uh, the tension that we are facing uh, all over the world in so many areas which disrupting also the global value chain uh, in, in different uh, frontiers uh, you need to redesign your economic system to becoming resilient on the local level then on the regional level then the international level uh, actually one of the lessons learned from uh, the outbreak of COVID is having uh, a global connected uh, 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 economic system yes. uh, is becoming a task now that's why uh, most of the nations are thinking of building resilient local economic and trade system and expanding this uh, local um, uh, resilient economic system to becoming regional uh, resilient economic system then from the uh, the 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 mm. cont or mm. the global regional level will go to the uh, having uh, resilient uh, global economic ecosystem mm -hmm. yes uh, engineer azam you've mentioned two important um, economic factors that have happened over the past two or three past years uh, the covid 19 which took over the world and then the Russia-Ukrainian conflict and the economic uh, effects of uh, this conflict on Africa as uh, the main topic for today. How did you see the response economically by Egypt towards those two factors or incidents? Uh, actually, uh, since uh, 2019, uh, when Egypt uh, was uh, heading uh, the African Union, uh, actually, we've seen a lot of initiatives that uh, took place uh, during our uh, uh, leadership of the African Union uh, in 2019. And yes. there were very ambitious uh, plans uh, to connect uh, the, the African continent economically uh, together. Because Africa, actually, if you look at the African uh, GDP, the African GDP is 2.9 trillion US dollars. Uh, and uh, of course uh, the, uh, the African continent is progressing uh, mm -hmm. in this uh, direction uh, the, G the African GDP was uh, 2.5 trillion almost uh, uh, four or five years ago yes. uh, so uh, Africa is one of the uh, great economic zones that are, is witnessing uh, rapid uh, growth yes. uh, and if you look at the size of uh, the African continent we are talking here about 1.3 billion uh, people, uh, the population is 1.3 billion, which is huge uh, market. Uh, uh, I've just seen also a report issued by the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Uh, it was uh, published in May uh, 2023, yes. almost a couple of months ago. Uh, and they were talking about, uh, an, uh, about the African free trade uh, area, which is considered one of the most important uh, trade areas that could 
lead the growth on the level of the continent and of course uh, on the international level as well yes uh, because of the size of uh, the population the market size here is really significant uh, however we are witnessing also some challenges that we need to address yes uh, of course the transport uh, infrastructure uh, the quality of uh, trade ecosystem within mm. the, the continent, uh, the tariff and non-tariff barriers, uh, the cross-border uh, trade system, and of course, again, technology could uh, play a critical role in resolving and finding innovative solutions and connecting uh, the African uh, economies all together. Yes. Uh, and of course, it would open a huge venue for uh, innovation on the process level, on the marketing level, uh, and of course, without again, utilization of technology for modernization of the trade ecosystem and uh, making uh, the African countries capable to become industrial nations <coughs> and of course the industry 4.0 uh, and uh, the automation of the process and employing uh, the uh, emerging technologies like artificial intelligence like uh, data sciences uh, in the production and the optimization of uh, the uh, uh, of the production cycles and the trade cycles of course this could open a great venue for uh, African uh, countries uh, mm -hmm. to boost their economic and of course eventually their uh, social development on the continent level which is very important to build such resilient uh, economic ecosystem across uh, the continent because it's, it's very promising actually mm -hmm. all the figures all the reports seeing Africa is one of the most uh, promising uh, areas that could witness huge uh, growth on economic and of course eventually on the social level if you are using the, the right instruments and the right uh, approach to develop uh, the economy and the society uh, within the continent. Yes, you mentioned a very important point the importance of artificial intelligence for our future here in Egypt for Africa and for the world because there are concerns regarding the artificial intelligence but my main question would be how far have we come here in Egypt regarding the artificial intelligence what can we do with it and what do we want to do with it and still couldn't do it uh, of course, this is uh, the, the question of, uh, of the century, actually, yes. of, of this our decade, mm. uh, at least. Uh, artificial intelligence is disrupting the way we live today. Uh, actually, it's a major inflection point in the history of mankind. Mm. Uh, I think it com could be compared to the first industrial revolution. Mm. The first industrial revolution took place in England, uh, in late 18th century and changed the world forever and converted the society and the economy from agriculture based society and economy to industrial uh, economy and uh, and society yes. and now uh, the artificial intelligence is doing the same uh, at the faster uh, pace of course compared to what happened in the late 18th century yes. uh, so uh, the uh, the effect the global effect of artificial intelligence uh, is will be almost 15 trillion us dollars by 2030 almost 15 percent of the global gdp will be generated or be added uh, through the artificial intelligence and its application because if you look at all different economic sectors uh, that's including the financial sector, uh, the healthcare sector, uh, the retail, the finance sector, uh, the aerospace and defense sector. Uh, just name it, the manufacturer sectors, of course. Uh, and by the way, manufacturing <coughs> sector has been using artificial intelligence for almost six years now. Yes. Uh, it, the robots w were in the, uh, uh, the automotive uh, industry, for example. Even uh, here in Egypt? Uh, since in 1960. Yes. It is, uh, yeah, so the, the, the utilization of artificial intelligence has been in industries for the last six mm. uh, de decades. But however, uh, it will be boosting the efficiency to the maximum, will boost uh, the quality control to the maximum we are taking we are talking here about zero defect manufacturing uh, concepts we are talking here uh, about uh, fully optimized production uh, cycles uh, which is uh, uh, will be reflected on the cost and quality of the finished products and and services uh, provided to the uh, end users uh, and of course the application in healthcare sector is unlimited the application in agriculture uh, sector is uh, unlimited especially artificial intelligence is not 
only developing by itself, but also it has an exponential uh, uh, impact uh, on different uh, uh, domains and areas of uh, technology, which is, uh, it could include uh, the bioengineering, uh, the next generation computing, the next generation uh, telecom system, and all such technologies are complementing each other and yes. uh, they are affecting every single uh, economic sector in our world today uh, and Egypt of course is we have a strategy for uh, for artificial intelligence the strategy uh, has a pillar for capacity building for use uh, to have uh, a workforce is capable to deal and uh, produce and generate uh, uh, technologies related to the artificial intelligence domain uh, there is another uh, uh, pillar within the strategy that is talking about the implementation of, uh, of artificial intelligence in different sectors that's including the healthcare sectors the agriculture uh, and motor management uh, sector for example mm -hmm. also there is another pillar that is concerned uh, of uh, having uh, uh, international sort of international cooperation uh, between Egypt and uh, the other countries who are excelling in the domain uh, of AI for uh, drafting and articulating frameworks for responsible AI utilization for uh, having a sort of uh, knowledge transfer uh, uh, mechanism to have uh, this kind of technology available for our youth our uh, and our uh, ICT community to develop and implement uh, such uh, enormous amount of uh, this emerging uh, technology for boosting uh, the development in every single uh, economic, uh, sector by the way we have mm. one of our startups is yes. considered one of the top 20 startups working in AI domain all over the world. From Egypt? From Egypt, yes. Uh, and this means that we could be having this technology uh, sooner rather than later more developed in the country. Uh, definitely. and It wouldn't be imported from the outside. Uh, actually, you need uh, always to have a sort of uh, knowledge transfer all the time mm -hmm. because it's a very high uh, pace uh, technology. Uh, yes. And of course, you need to invest more in uh, research and development. And now we are seeing so many uh, colleges and universities are specialized in the domain of artificial intelligence in Egypt. Uh, and of course, you need to do more basic and applied research. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we have uh, now a center is totally dedicated for applied research in the domain of AI because this is the future actually if you need to build a better future if you need to have very competitive economic sectors at large you need to employ uh, artificial intelligence to the maximum and of course uh, the ability of owning the technology will give you a leverage on uh, different uh, levels uh, regionally and internationally and will attract a new segment of investment of quality investment yes. as well to this quality startups working in uh, high-tech uh, domains such as uh, artificial intelligence for yes. sure. Uh, in general Azim, before heading uh, to the second report of uh, the daily debate for tonight you've mentioned the russian ukrainian conflict and its economic effects on uh, africa in general and egypt in specific uh, in the past a couple of weeks president abdel fattah hassisi uh, was present at uh, the Russia Africa summit in St. Petersburg for uh, the economic development and the humanitarian development as well how do you see the importance of uh, this summit uh, in terms of mitigating the differences uh, between uh, the Russia Ukraine uh, conflict and the economic effects of it on Africa because the African leaders were there and they spoke about the needs of the African continent and the role of Egypt in specific because you mentioned that Egypt was heading the African Union in 2019 and this is the second edition of it held in 2023 the first one was one Egypt uh, was heading the African Union in 2019 uh, this for sure uh, Egypt is always uh, a cornerstone uh, in the region yes. and uh, 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 always has a role to play uh, on uh, the African level and on uh, the Middle East and North Africa level and of course to open such uh, channels between uh, Egypt uh, and of course the African countries uh, with the superpowers all over the world is very important is very pivotal and of course uh, this uh, 
save uh, the region and the continent uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, issues that could be faced yes. uh, during uh, because we are witnessing a new world order now and the balance here is very important and Egypt is is very keen to play a very balanced uh, role between the superpowers and of course Egypt is, has <coughs> so many uh, important ties with all key players all over the world uh, from the east and the west as well. Yes, uh, Engineer uh, Mohammed Azam turning to the second report of uh, the Daily Debate for tonight. As I mentioned in the beginning, that Egypt is focusing uh, for the near future on developing the economic ties between the country and Africa at large, and more specifically in the field of the free trade zones. We will be having more details in the upcoming report, so stay tuned. with Africa in recent years. Minister of Trade and Industry Ahmed Samir announced that the value of trade between Egypt and African markets reached approximately $2.1 billion during the first quarter of this year. The value of Egyptian commodity exports to the continent amounted to $1.6 billion, while the value of Egyptian imports from Africa amounted to $506 million. This comes in the latest report received by the General Authority for Export and Import Control on trade exchange between Egypt and Africa during the first quarter of this year. Samir highlighted that the ministry is currently working on achieving economic integration between African countries and overcoming obstacles that may hinder trade movements between countries. The ministry also aims to benefit from trade agreements signed between Egypt, African countries and blocs such as COMESA and the African Continental Free Trade Agreement in addition the ministry seeks to expand participation in specialized exhibitions and increase Egyptian commercial representations in many African countries. Egypt has been actively seeking to strengthen its economic ties with Africa in recent years and has made significant progress in this regard. In 2020, Egypt became the first country to sign the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which aims to create a single market for goods and services across the continent. Additionally, Egypt has been increasing its investments in various African countries, including infrastructure and energy projects. Welcome back. You're still watching uh, the Daily Debate and uh, still honored to be having with me Engineer Mohammed Azem uh, for the second part of uh, the Daily Debate uh, for tonight. We were speaking about uh, the importance as well of the private sector. President Abdel Fattah Hassisi spoke today about the importance of the private sector. Uh, we can be having uh, the same statement for both Egypt and Africa. How do you see the private sector's importance um, in strengthening the African-Egyptian bilateral trade and the economy in general? Uh, of course, the uh, private sector is the main driver for any economic uh, growth and especially small and medium enterprises if you have the proper role uh, within uh, a cluster. Yes. That's why, again, we need uh, to build clusters uh, based uh, on, uh, of, of course, uh, you need the, the, within the cluster uh, large enterprises, you need the government, you need the local administration uh, uh, authorities, you need the research and development institutions becoming very important uh, part within the cluster. You need the small and medium enterprises and even micro enterprises uh, with a role, with a specific role uh, yes. to play within this cluster. Mm. Uh, and uh, using this cluster, uh, building s multiple clusters, connecting all the clusters together, uh, first you need to build this cluster on the local and national level and connect these clusters all together uh, domestically and then build such clusters and similar clusters or complementary clusters uh, across the continent and also connect all them together uh, and of course the, the private sector is uh, the main driver of employment as well uh, and, uh, uh, and because they are easy to open so many opportunities uh, for uh, uh, workers and labor force uh, to work within uh, the private sector, within yes. the economic uh, uh, activities. Uh, and of course, uh, again, you need to unify this vision across the continent. Uh, because um, if you need to excel, if you need to have a resilient uh, economic 
ecosystem uh, on the level of the continent, you need to unify uh, the vision uh, uh, of the continent of complementing each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot uh, duplicate each other. We, we, don't, we don't need to, there is no need to uh, compete uh, with each other. Yes. But uh, the most important thing is to complement. Uh, if you are war in Egypt, for example, you can excel in the logistics uh, uh, economic sector uh, and in high-tech economic sector. In some other areas, uh, you can excel uh, in the domains related to mining, for example, uh, or uh, agriculture, because they have uh, the water resources and uh, lands are uh, available to, to be used over there. Uh, and building such clusters and connecting all them together within a holistic uh, approach and holistic vision that can see the 360 degree of uh, the different industries and different economic sectors w uh, within the continent, uh, I think uh, Africa could play a, a pivotal role in the new world order and could be one of the economic uh, superpowers within 10 years or a decade from now. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, if you are talking here about the, the, the continent GDP, we are talking here 2.9, and they are actually increasing by 20% every year, uh, and uh, on average, and most of the economies uh, are progressing at a very high uh, uh, pace. And uh, the, tr the size of uh, inter trade between the African uh, countries is progressing. Actually, we are talking here about one billion US dollar across uh, the continent, and uh, aiming to be uh, uh, like uh, having a, a 50 percent increase uh, by 2030, yes. and uh, to have a contribution to the global uh, uh, economy uh, by 15 percent. So. Uh, rising uh, the, the GDP in Africa from two or almost three uh, trillion US dollars to becoming 15 trillion US dollars. Of course, it needs effort, it needs vision, it needs uh, investment because uh, investment will come if we are ready as African uh, nations uh, to attract uh, such investment. And this include having the qualified, uh, the skilled labor force uh, working in different uh, uh, domain of uh, the economy. You need to have uh, uh, well-focused uh, research and development institution to help this uh, kind of economic institution to to grow and to own the technology for boosting their productivity and optimize their value chain. You need to, to build more infrastructure that including the logistics hub, as you said in your report, mm -hmm. uh, and of course uh, to building uh, roads. You, you need to have uh, uh, advanced and modernized railway uh, uh, eco, uh, or transport uh, system because uh, the size of the continent you ca is very uh, huge and yes. you cannot depend on uh, air freight for example it would be very uh, expensive and definitely will make you not competitive uh, you need to connect the ports so you need to modernize the ports uh, ecosystem uh, uh, all over uh, the country and we are witnessing now the, the progression in, in the sector of uh, sea and air ports in Egypt and uh, we've seen a lot of development uh, in Alexandria, uh, Seaport, in Port Said, Suez, Sukhna uh, and we've seen also a huge development in the domain of uh, the railway uh, transport uh, system we are witnessing uh, new infrastructure, uh, new uh, locomotives uh, and of course this should be connected also to the uh, uh, not only a on the local uh, level or the domestic level, but also uh, on the uh, continental uh, level. And without complementing each other, uh, I, I think we are losing a great opportunity yes. uh, for boosting our economic development and, of course, uh, increasing our GDP and ultimately the GDP per capita mm -hmm. uh, on the continent level. So uh, it's, it's not easy, but it's not hard if we unify uh, the vision among uh, the countries and we see uh, the, how we can complement each other. And, uh, and having uh, a, what I say a master plan or a blueprint for uh, mm -hmm. the economic development across uh, the continent, especially Africa has a very ambitious uh, plan for Africa 2063, uh, which is, uh, could be uh, the base for uh, the 
future economic and social development across uh, the whole continent. Yes, and for the benefit of Egypt and uh, Africa, we need to be increasing competitiveness, we need to be uh, eliminating uh, the bureaucratic uh, obstacles in order to be getting more investments from uh, the outside world, from even locally, but mainly from uh, the other continents as well. How do you see this could be done throughout technology for Egypt and for Africa on the short term? Uh, on the short term, actually, a digital transformation of uh, uh, of the governmental services or the public service at large uh, could be uh, a magic in this regard because yes. it eliminates uh, or even eradicates a, a lot of issues that were uh, facing over uh, the last four or five decades. Uh, so technology, again, uh, if you be able to integrate or having... Uh, <coughs> only channel for providing the public service throughout the technology like uh, digital Egypt platform for example when yes. we, we discussed this so many times uh, together uh, and uh, having uh, or availing such services uh, uh, in a very systematic way in very centralized uh, way uh, to the public sector to the private sector and even to individuals and citizens and small businesses this could leverage your uh, competitiveness uh, to a great extent and of course if we can connect these ecosystems all together across uh, the continent you will have a major uh, disruption in the domain of uh, custom clearance for uh, cross-border uh, trade uh, and uh, of course we'll be able to see uh, the whole value chain from the supply uh, side and from the demand side uh, in a very transparent way uh, throughout uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, technology and uh, by connecting all the stakeholders together within a digital ecosystem of course this would boost uh, the, the whole economic uh, development uh, across the continent. Yes, uh, Engineer uh, Mohammed Azam, uh, the uh, technology and development expert and the board member of the International Association of Management of uh, Technology. Thank you very much for being with us tonight on the Daily Debate. Uh, always a pleasure and honor being with you. And Thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine. And I will be leaving you, however, with uh, the latest uh, presidential activities of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi over the past week in the upcoming report. Thank you for watching and goodbye.